Hey, hello, everybody. Mr. Foley here, and we are looking at Macro 6, the Federal Reserve today. <laughs> so you've got, if you can see in the background here, I don't know all I can see. My boys made forts everywhere. So you've got like Foley Fortomania in the background. So that gets to be a little bit of this lesson today. Congratulations. So today we're talking about the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve has a real big impact on people's lives because they manage the money supply of our country. They literally work to decide how much money should be in the economy and how much should not. And that is a big impact on interest rates, uh, interest rates for your cars, for your homes, for uh, you know four wheelers, whatever it might be. And so that's really important. They also decide how much money is going to go in and out of the economy. And so how much money do banks have to um, keep in this Federal Reserve Bank, which will determine how much money they can lend to other people. And so big impacts, on loans and things that you'll experience in your life. So most people don't know much about it. We're not going to go into extreme detail, but we are going to look at how it operates and what it does to try to work in certain situations. So here we go. You can use this to fill in your notes. All right. So the origins of the Federal Reserve. Well, it's also called the Fed. It was created in 1913 because banks were failing way too often. And this caused others to fail and led to financial panics and recessions and exists to provide a more stable banking platform to prevent major bank failures. And we did have situations where tons of banks would fail and all of a sudden you're, you're out of money. It's gone. These banks don't have it anymore. And so in 1913, we got smart and said, you know what, maybe we should do something so our banks stop failing. That was the goal of the Federal Reserve. It's worked pretty well at times. Uh, other times it didn't really do its job. If you look at the Great Depression, definitely did not stop banks from failing, but it has worked at other periods of time. So what are the main goals of the Fed? Well, there's a couple. Number one, you want a strong economy with low inflation. Now, the Fed does want inflation to occur. They want prices to increase a little bit each year because the hope is that you're gonna have an economy that's growing. And when you have an economy that's growing, typically you're gonna see some inflation. So it's not always a terrible thing. I answered the why. Number two, keep the money supply growing steadily in the United States. Why? Again, hopefully we're continuing to grow. And if we continue to increase our GDP, we need to continue to increase our money supply. Otherwise you're gonna to start to see some problems with inflation. Um, or deflation, depending on the situation. And so you need to grow your money supply if you're producing more goods to keep them kind of evened out. So the goal numbers we're going to look at. For inflation, we want around 2%. For unemployment, we want around 4 to 5%. And the Federal Reserve will make decisions that are going to help or hurt uh, with these numbers. So here we go. The leader of the Federal Reserve is a man named Jerome Powell. Okay. Uh, they are appointed by presidents and approved. And uh, they cannot be removed. As far as I know, they can't be removed by the president. And so they're independent once they're put in place. So the parts of the Federal Reserve, what do we see? I'm going to go down here. I'm kind of in the way up there. Well, you have a board of governors. Okay. Okay. You have a federal open market committee, and then you have 12 district banks. And we'll talk about all these parts. So the, the highest part is the board of governors. And there are seven members and they make up the board of governors and here's their jobs. They write regulations to strengthen banks. And so they make rules, not only for the Federal Reserve banks, but they make rules for commercial banks. So a Wells Fargo and Associated, all those different kinds of banks. They oversee the reserve banks. So we're going to talk about these reserve banks that have a lot of money in them. They make sure they're doing their job. And they participate in the FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee. And we will talk about that in a minute. And it'll start to make a little bit more sense. So the Federal Open Market Committee. Well, what is it? Here we go. It's made up of the governors. So we have the board of seven governors, okay? And then it's made up of five of the reserve bank presidents. And so they kind of rotate. So for example, there's a reserve bank in Minneapolis. So Minneapolis, San Francisco, and Kansas City rotate each year, they get one vote. 
So you have five of the presidents of the banks. You have the board of governors. They meet eight times a year. And the main goal is to decide how to control the money supply in the United States. How do we control the billions of dollars that are floating around? Do we need to add more? Do we need less? What do we do? And so, like I said, this is accomplished by determining how much money banks have available to lend. Banks are required to put some of their money into the Federal Reserve. And when they have to put money into the Federal Reserve, they have less money to lend out to people. So let's say that you want to get a loan. Well, a bank can give less loans if they have to give 20% of their money to the Federal Reserve. If they only have to give 10% to the Federal Reserve, then they have more money available. So they, they change things. They have a few different ways to manipulate that to make it work for them. So the Federal Reserve banks, there are 12 districts and each has its own bank. So this whole region here in red is one district and it has a bank in San Francisco. Ours, as you can see right here, is going to be with Minneapolis and all this blue region. A part of Wisconsin is going to be with the green region here and their bank is going to be Chicago. So there's 12 banks total. So what are the jobs of the Federal Reserve? Well, they try to provide financial services to other banks. And how do they do that? Well, an example would be clearing checks and transferring money. The Federal Reserve tries to make it easier for commercial banks to operate because that makes it easier for all of us. If we have an easy way to have money flow around, that's gonna make it so that we're more successful with business and with personal life, okay? So here's how the check thing works, for example. Let's say that Jack writes a check um, with First National Bank in Detroit and he sends it to Gabby in Portland. Well, Gabby gets the check and she deposits in the, the Citibank in Portland. And Citibank puts $200 in her account. Now, the thing to think about is how does she actually, where's that $200 come from? I mean, Jack literally sent a piece of paper, right? Well, there's two ways this could operate. The Portland Bank in Portland could contact Jack's bank, National Bank of Detroit, and transfer funds. But, you know, when you think about debit cards and checks, like these are thousands of transactions each day. That doesn't work very well. You're going to call or, or text or email or whatever about thousands of transactions. That doesn't work. So they need another way. Well, here's how it works. Citibank in Portland sends a check to the Federal Reserve in San Francisco. The Federal Reserve gives Citibank $200, okay, to kind of reimburse them for the $200 they gave Gabby. Then the Federal Reserve of Chicago um, gets a hold of this information and they take $200 out of First National Bank and Jack's account over here. So the Chicago branch of the Federal Reserve takes the money from Jack's account and it gives it over to San Francisco. San Francisco will then give that money to the Bank of Portland. The Bank of Portland gives that money to Gabby. And so you have this flow, this cycle. And so therefore all that the banks have to do in this case is they need to give the checks to the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve gets all the money. So instead of a bank having to call 50 different other banks a day, all they have to do is take it to the reserve, they'll give them the money and they'll take care of the rest, which is a lot easier. The second job is managing the money supply. And there's gonna be a bunch of different ways they do this. Uh, we'll talk about them in more detail as we get along. So they wanna control how much money is available in the economy, how much money banks have to loan out to people as well. Job three, this is a big one, supervise the commercial banks. Make sure that these commercial banks are making good decisions. You don't want Bank of America or Citigroup or Wells Fargo or any of them making decisions that are gonna hurt people. And so how do you make sure that they have rules in place that are good regulations? So the next set for your notes are the functions of the Federal Reserve. So what does it do? We kind of talked about some of those and we'll put those back up here, but there's gonna be a few other things as well. So the first one we talked about is clear checks. They transfer funds from one bank to another when you deposit funds. Pretty big, important thing. And I have to look into how debit cards work. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure at the moment if they flow in the same way. I got to look into that. Not sure. I have a feeling they don't. I have a feeling they work through Visa and other companies. 
Uh, number two, they are the government's fiscal agent. That means that the Federal Reserve and these 12 banks that are U.S. banks, um, they hold a lot of the government's money. And so when you get a ca uh, tax return, um, the U.S. Treasury issues that, and a lot of the money from the Treasury is kept in the Federal Reserve banks. Three, like we said, they supervise member banks. They regulate the banks to make sure they're running correctly. They're following all the rules and procedures as they should. I'm just gonna move myself up here out of the way. Fourth, they have holding reserves and setting reserve requirements. They set the requirements for how much money banks must keep in the Federal Reserve. And we'll talk about that a little bit later as we get ready for our activity. The next one, they supply the paper currency. And so the Federal Reserve will destroy old paper currency. They'll replace it with new paper currency. And they're the, the ideal group to actually do that. And we'll talk about why that is. And lastly, they regulate the money supply. They determine how much money is in circulation. And they have a lot of different ways to do that. And that's really important. So why new money? Well, part of the reason we have new money is we need new security features. As time goes on, Counterfeiters get really smart with what they're doing and they, it, it becomes easy to take an old $100 bill and make a counterfeit one. And so you continue to add new features to it to make it harder to counterfeit. So what do they do with the old money? Well, they, they do this, they chop it up. Um, I got a little bag at school. It's full of money that's been chopped up and thrown away. So why do that? Why destroy money? Well, it's pretty simple. If you don't destroy the old money, you have way too much money in your economy and that's going to cause inflation and the price of, of goods is going to go up dramatically. And so they have to determine, you know, do we want to keep the amount of money the same? If we do, we have to destroy as much money as we had. If we want to increase the amount of money, we have to, you know, destroy a little bit less than the new money that we're making. So kind of a crazy thing there. So what is the Fed? Well, the Fed is like a mechanic repairing an engine. They look at the money and banking and loans and they figure out how do we fine tune this? How do we make it work as best we can for our country? They're like a carpenter rebuilding a house and looking at the problems and, and fixing those. It's like a doctor healing a sick patient, figuring out the illness and trying to make solutions. And so as we said, the goal is simple. We want an economy that's doing well you have a growing money supply, low inflation around 2%, low unemployment, and they have a lot of different things they do to try to make that happen. And so that's the intro. Uh, we're going to get into more specifics later. Check out the video that I have linked on the instruction sheet too. That can kind of help you to understand how the Federal Reserve works as well. So we'll go from there. Have a great day and I will talk to you later.